Yo, I got a bone to pick with the motorcycle community. A serious bone to pick with the motorcycle community, and I'm gonna tell you why. And this is gonna be some brutally honest advice for riders that's new and riders that's experienced. More and more riders are hitting the highways every single day. And with the advent of social media, it's become more and more accessible. And these adventures are being shown to the masses, inspiring a new generation of riders each and every day. But my concern is, even though it's motivating people, this will invite people to invite themselves out on rides or in situations where they're really not really comfortable with. They just don't know it just yet. And to my people who are experienced riders, pump your brakes, I got something for y'all. With that being said, I wanna let you guys know, new riders and experienced riders, everybody can't go. I'ma say that once again, everybody cannot go. It comes a point in time, like I said with my newer riders, they get out there, they get a bike, they're super excited, they wanna ride, they see the things on social media, on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, they see people traveling far away, they see uh, people pulling up to these uh, monuments and murals and just having a grand old time. But sometimes, new rider, you cannot go. So I'm gonna give you seven things that you need to ask yourself before you invite yourself on a ride. And for my experienced riders, before you invite somebody newer that you're not familiar with on a ride with you. None of these pieces of advice are in any order at all. Take it as you wish. They all apply just the same. All right, number one, remember no particular order. Are you really ready or are your eyes just really big? And when I say that, you bought a bike, you started riding, you did a couple of bike nights, you went around the city a couple of times, but are you really ready to hit the open road? Are you really ready to, to challenge yourself and to push yourself? That is some things that you need to know internally before you invite yourself on a ride with somebody. Have you prepared? I'm gonna say that again. Have you prepared mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially? So mentally, are you mentally prepared for the fact that it may rain on this ride? Can you ride in the rain? Can you ride in heavy rain? Sometimes it's not the best idea to stop in the middle while it's raining. Sometimes you have to make it to an exit or an overpass or something. So you're going to be in rain at some point in time. Are you ready? Have you prepared yourself? Do you have the proper gear, whether it's rain gear or heat gear? Are you prepared to ride in the cold? Have you trained to take some of these rides in these conditions? Well, how do you do that? I hear a lot of people at times say, man, I don't ride in the rain. Okay, cool. Well, how would you train in the rain if you never ride in the rain? How do you know how to handle your bike in the rain if you never ride in the rain? Sometimes you just got to do it. Is your health ready for this ride? There's people out there who suffer from uh, different types of illnesses. There are people out there who take certain types of medicine. Are you prepared? Is your health really ready to take some of these trips that you want to go on? You need to make sure that you have your medicine, that you're taking it, that you're, you're conditioning your body to make some of these rides beforehand. You don't want to get out on a ride and here you are, you know, 12 hours away from your, your home base or your hometown or your house and you forgot your medicine or you forgot to take your medicine. That can be a very, very, very dangerous situation, all right? So make sure that you're prepared health-wise as well. You've been eating right, you've been drinking right, your body is properly hydrated. That is huge because dehydration can really set in, especially with the summer months. So make sure before you take a long ride, get that water in your system early. Don't wait till the day before and you want to down a whole bunch of water. Have you prepared your motorcycle for this ride? A lot of people say, hey, I got the oil change. It's more than preparing your bike for a ride than just doing the oil change. Have you checked the clutches? Have you checked your brakes, your brake pads, your tires? Have you had it looked over all of the way? Make sure there's no moisture. If you have hydraulic lines, no moisture in your clutch um, system. It's a lot of things that you should be doing. And uh, one of those things is just doing the whole T-clock system. I'm not gonna get into what T-clocks is. You can look that up, T-clocks. One of the things that people don't really think about when they're getting ready to take some of these rides 
it's making sure that y'all are all on the same exact page. When I say the same exact page, so we talking about things like, what's the speed? How fast y'all gonna be going? Are you comfortable with riding at certain speed? Gas stops, rest stops, hotel. Are you guys splitting a hotel? Can you deal with somebody who snores? Are y'all on the same page as for us? Things that y'all wanna see, points of interest. Uh, how much time you gonna spend in a certain area or not? What's gonna happen if an emergency pops up? Like, are y'all all on the same page? Do y'all know who y'all need to call in an emergency or not? Another piece of advice, train for your ride. Please train for your ride. This is this is more geared to my new, my new riders. If you have never been outside of the city, if you've never taken a four, five, six hour ride, don't invite yourself on a ride with a group of individuals who's gonna be gone 13, 14, 15, 20 plus hours away. And you haven't properly trained for that because some people's stamina has been built up to take these rides. They're conditioned to ride long distances. They know how long they can go with their particular seat, their setup, how their bike is made, the whole nine yards. They know what they can do. Make sure that you're training your body, your mental as well so you can take those rides. So don't just jump out and take a 13, 14, 15 hour ride if you've never done it before. Start with a two hour ride and work your way up three, four, then you do a turn and burn. Or I'm gonna ride four hours one way, eat some lunch, come back four hours. That's an eight hour day. So you know you can at least do eight hours. And then slowly work your way up and then you're ready to take some of these long excursions with your friends. Whew, this one right here. <laughs> this is one right here. Do not be a complainer on your ride. If it's a group of you guys, and sometimes plans change, you may need to make an executive decision and you know you get together as a group and you guys vote on something. Hey, well, it's too dark, we're not gonna push forward, or it's raining a little bit too hard, we're gonna just stay put for a while. Do not complain, it's for the good of the group. If everybody in the group except you come to an agreement, do not get on a trip and continue the trip and be mad and, uh, 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 and I'm complaining and blah 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 no well, why we have to do this now we could have kept going be quiet and enjoy the ride because that type of energy definitely festers on a trip and the thing is you don't want to have that type of negative energy while you're trying to concentrate on something that's inherently dangerous. I know a lot of times we don't think about that, but this stuff is dangerous and things can happen at any time. So we want our thoughts, minds, and emotions to be as clear as possible. Another thing, another piece of advice for my newer riders is when you get out there, do not overcompensate just to go with other people. I'm gonna say that again, because this is a real one. Do not overcompensate just to go on a ride. You have to learn to be comfortable with yourself and know what your limits is. Do not overcompensate to go on a ride. Ride your ride. Do not overcompensate just to go on a ride with somebody else. Like that can be a really, really dangerous thing. If you know you're not comfortable at a certain speed, if you know you're not comfortable going over certain types of terrain, bridges, heights, mountains, whatever the case may be, don't say, oh yeah, I can do it. Oh, I'll be fine, I'll be okay. Just because you know people are going on an, a, a really adventurous ride, don't do it to yourself because you can put the group in a precarious situation by doing so. For my season rides, we got to do better. I know we get out and we have these amazing experiences, rides, and stuff like that, and we want to share those experiences because as a motorcycle community, that's what it's about, sharing these experiences with other people on two wheels. But we have to make sure that we as the organizers or leaders or uh, planners of these rides that we properly vet the people that are coming on the trips with us okay i'm gonna say that again we need to properly vet the people that are coming on the trips with us you feel me why is that important once again for all of the the, men, the reasons that i mentioned before for all of the reasons that i mentioned before you need to properly vet ask the questions it'll it's okay it's okay to say hey you can't go. 
or maybe next time if you know this person can't ride at a certain speed i like to ride at a certain speed and i know this person can't ride the same i'm not going to invite this person on my ride if i know this person's health is not in the best order i'm not going to invite this person on the ride if i know this person can't do uh what it takes as far as riding in adverse conditions and that's something that the, the majority of the group that you ride with does, do not invite them on the ride. If those, if that person is inexperienced in riding in traffic or like I say, heights or anything, do not invite them on the ride. It'll be okay. Take the pictures, send it to them. Hey, wish you were here and keep it moving. I know we want to share this, this beautiful sport of motorcycling with everybody, but the most important thing is to be safe at all times. At the end of the day, you have to know that everybody cannot go with you. And as a newer rider or inexperienced rider, you have to know that you can't go with everybody and it's perfectly fine. It'll be a time where y'all cross paths and y'all are on the same page and y'all can take these trips together. In the meantime, between time for my newer riders, get out there and practice on the things that you need to practice with. For my experienced riders, make sure that we are doing our best to vet new riders or inexperienced riders before you invite them on an epic trip or a long ride or whatever the case may be. And if I left something out, and I know I'm leaving something out, I'm kind of going off the head. So if you have any advice for people who want to take these epic rides or long rides, or long trips on motorcycles and they're fairly new to the game, what advice would you give them? Drop them in the comments below. And for my seasoned riders, what are some more questions that we need to be asking newer riders before we invite them on this trip? I really appreciate you guys tuning in. If you can, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any videos from the channel. I appreciate you guys. And this is your man GQ, the leader of the Peace Army, telling you guys to be safe, be cool, and most importantly, be you, and peace out until we meet again.